Shalom, Shalom Ras Tefari. This is Ras Yadinos Tefari of the Lion of Judah Society, Wendem Yadu to the Brotherhood. Now, this video here, this is a compilation video um, from the producers of the Exposed series. And this is one of us on the Elanine 2012 or 2011 and some of the various different um, vids out there, most of them like on the YouTubes and elsewhere. But this section here, this particular section caught my interest because it, um, it elaborated somewhat on portions of the scripture, portions of the Holy Bible, in particular the Nabim or the Nabiyat, the prophets, and in particular Tinbete uh, Armias or the prophet um, Jeremiah, Jeremiah's prophecy and the connection that some see in Jeremiah's prophecy to these particular days and time that we're in, and in particular the, the December 21st, uh, 2011, 2012, 2012 uh, um, prophecy. So what we're going to do is let's um, rewind this a little bit here. Let us rewind this a little bit here in order to give you uh, an insight on what we think is really interesting and important about this right here. Let's elliptical orbit around our sun. And three, it is returning to pass through the core of our solar system, which explains our recent solar violence, global warming, and ongoing Earth changes. Assuming all of this is true, it stands to reason that there would be documented history of a previous Planet X flyby. Yes, there is. After you look at the scientific proof, the historical proof begins to leap out at you in completely new ways. A good example of this new context can be found with Jeremiah, a prophet from the Old Testament. He felt compelled to warn us of something he called the Destroyer, and he clearly foresaw how the entire earth would suffer its wrath. In Jeremiah 25:32 and 48, we read, Disasters will soon spread from nation to nation. They will come like a powerful storm to all the faraway places on earth. Here, Jeremiah clearly warns us that this future cataclysm will be set us on a global scale. He goes on to say, the destroyer will come against every town. Not one town will escape. The Lord said this will happen. Here, Jeremiah identifies the global cataclysm as being caused by something he refers to as the destroyer. So are there any similar ancient texts from the same period of time that give us the same exact wording? Yes, there is. For this, we go back to the Exodus, which was as much a blessing for the Hebrews as it was a terrible curse for the Egyptians. In the aftermath of Exodus, the Egyptians had lost their faith. Their own pantheon of gods had proven impotent before the powers of the Hebrew God. Just as we felt compelled to understand why 9-11 caught us so unawares, the Egyptians needed to understand what happened to them as well. So as the Hebrews began to write the Old Testament, the Egyptians simultaneously penned a massive anthology called the Great Book. The original text was written in ancient Heretic and was later translated into Phoenician and then on into English. In its original form, the Great Book was the size of a modern encyclopedia, and it offered very precise historical accounts. Two such notable accounts were Noah's Flood, or the Deluge, as it is more commonly known across the four corners of the earth. In the Egyptian account, there's the Suda and Hanon. They described an ark very similar to the one built by Noah, and in much the same 
where they differ, and strikingly so, is in what actually caused the ten plagues of Exodus. According to the ancient Egyptians, what caused the ten plagues of Exodus was a massive object. They also tell us this same object caused Noah's flood and the destruction of Atlantis as well. Like the Hebrew prophet Jeremiah, they too called it the destroyer and have warned us of its return. In fact, the ancient Egyptians go to great length to warn us that Jeremiah's destroyer will return with catastrophic consequences for all of the earth and those who live upon it, and in these days. What remains of these ancient Egyptian historical accounts are contained within the first six books of the Colburn Bible, and they corroborate similar accounts in the Hebrew Torah or the Old as it is referred to by Christians. Scientifically accurate, these ancient Egyptian accounts read as easily as man on the street TV interviews. This is why noted Planet X historian Greg Jenner says that the Colbert Bible is the Rosetta Stone of Planet X. This is because the Egyptian accounts are so quiescent they unlock many Planet X secrets buried within the Holy Bible and numerous other ancient texts and folklore. Many of the harbinger signs of the destroyer's return mentioned within the Colbert Bible have already come to pass, and it is warning us that what will come will be Jeremiah's destroyer. The Colbert Bible gives us many examples of what this is going to be like. The most notable comes from the Book of Manuscripts. When blood drops upon the earth, the destroyer will appear and mountains will open up and belch forth fire and ashes. Trees will be destroyed and all living things engulfed. Waters will be swallowed up by the land and seas will boil. Assuming our governments know all this, what are they doing about it? And of course, we want to know what's going to happen to us. Well, our governments have known about it for a long time, and yes, they're doing plenty about it. The question is, what are you doing about it? Once this all begins to sink in, it can take your breath away. And so the first question we often ask ourselves is, am I nuts? Am I just seeing things? For those who feel this way, you're not nuts and you're not seeing things. What's happening is that the blinders are coming off. When that happens, the first thing we all see is the realization that in 2012, Americans will be burying their dead as their forefathers did during the American Civil War, by the thousands, by the tens of thousands. All right, so that right there is the clip that we wanted to share with you. And the main part of the clip, of course, is concerning Jeremiah's destroyer, or what's known and what's called in the in the prophecy, the Tinbit, Tinbit Aramis, Aramis, as the destroyer. Now, just backing this um, documentary here up, and this is from the exposed DVD on the Illuminati and Elanine and Nibiru Planet X 2012-2011. Um, let's just go go back to right around where we started, and it was roughly around here. Now, of course, some of y'all might be familiar with this. This is a speculation from um, uh, Stitchin or Sitchin, um, speaking about the Anunnaki and the particular um, course um, of the hel- heliactical course of this unusual course of this planet that's known as Planet X, and it's connected with this green comet, and of course, if some of you all have checked out some of the information out there, it's very certain that the scientists, um, NASA, and others, they, they basically know about these things and have suppressed a lot of this information from the public because they don't want the public to panic and really lose control. Those who are ruling society don't want to lose control by announcing that there's even this possibility, you know, or giving credence to it because then people would be thinking about other things than so-called making money 
and doing a lot of the vain and worthless and useless things that they are doing to to so-called pass the time. They will become more sentient and more conscious about the really big picture, but instead keep everybody into their little psychological and emotional compartments, their materialistic compartments, the compartmentality of their minds and, you know, their interests. Keep them on the grid and keep them in their boxes. But what's interesting about this particular prophecy in the book of um, Jeremiah, I mean, there's many things interesting about it, but this 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 connection here with the Colburn Bible and what has been alleged to be some ancient Egyptian um, documentation that was written in um, Hieratic, which is the ancient Egyptian script form. Some say that the Arabic language and Seretic Arabic comes from that as well so forth and so on. But let's go to the the portions of scripture um, that are quoted. So let's just move the vid from, from right here. So if this object is in a long elliptical orbit around our own sun, that brings us to the crux of the matter. And with this in mind, let's assume the following three things. One, Planet X is an old unborn companion to our own sun. Two, it is in a long elliptical orbit around our sun. And three, it is returning to pass through the core of our solar system, which explains our recent solar violence, global warming, and ongoing earth changes. Now, what's, what's very interesting is that this, this, this day, to, today, when we're recording this, and let's just um, uh, date this for the record that today is February uh, February 1st, uh, 2012, and here in the East Coast, um, New York, uh, New York, a city so great, they had to name it twice, like Babylon, Babylon, Babylon is fallen, is fallen so great, they had to say that it was fallen, that it has fallen twice, that the weather is really unusually um, uh, a blast of spring, they call it. A blast of spring, so a lot of folks are able to go out and play golf and go to the park and wear lighter clothing, so forth and so on. Now, we also try to watch international news, so we was checking out like BBC and, and Deutsche Welle. Um, and over in Europe, uh, they're having an unusually um, cold blast, just to see that kind of contrast, so some can go back to the data from this time while it survives and while it exists and really see that contrast between America over here in the so-called states across the pond and then look at what's going on in Europe. This, this, this contrast, even last year, there was like 30 degrees and this year was 62 degrees. Last year, 2011, it was um, snow, a couple of inches of snow were on the ground and this year there's no snow on the ground in the so-called west, the western hemisphere, and on the eastern coast of the western hemisphere. But in Europe, uh, some so far they said about 40 or so people died somewhere in the Ukraine or other places, but people are having it rough with a lot of cold weather. And that's very unusual over there. So this is just one example of the, the evidence. Because people say, well, this just normally happens. Well, Keep sleeping if you if they want to sleep, let them sleep. But we who are waking up to this reality now have to really consider the evidence. And as this documentary says, well, what is the government doing? But really, what are we doing? Because the warning, the warning signs are out there. Even that movie they did a couple of years ago, um, the day after tomorrow, though it did not happen the so-called day after tomorrow, it was still warning of things. To come, and we're seeing the the signs increasing. The signs are not decreasing, but the signs are increasing. So even a, a, a fool that has a little bit of sense would recognize something is definitely changing. This didn't happen before, but it's happening more now. Some say this is because of harp and everything else. Well, harp and man-made things are affecting the weather and climate, and and tweaking things. But there's Imagine that man is doing his best to control the weather and cause weather climate, and then the earth and the heavens are also going through changes, which are ordained by the higher powers, or what we'll call Jah or God. 
the two are going to clash. Where will we be and what will we be doing when this happens? And will we even be conscious of it? Now, assuming all of this is true, it stands to reason that there would be documented history of a previous Planet X flyby. Yes, there is. After you look at the scientific proof, the historical proof begins to leap out at you in completely new ways. A good example of this new context can be found with Jeremiah, a prophet from the Old Testament. He felt compelled to warn us of something he called the Destroyer, and he clearly foresaw how the entire earth would suffer its wrath. In Jeremiah 25:32 and 48, we read 35, 22, 35, 22, I think he said. Let's take this down, 35, 22, because we got some notes on, on Jeremiah as well concerning this um, destroyer, 35, 22, I think he says, and 42 and 8. So let's make a note of this right here. Jeremiah um, 35, 22, and 42 and 8. Let's rewind it and, and see if that's what he said. That's the quotes that he gave. From the Old Testament, he felt compelled to warn us of something he called the destroyer. And he clearly foresaw how the entire earth would suffer its wrath. In Jeremiah 25, 32, and 48, 42, 8, 35, 25, 25, 22? 32. Uh, 25, 32. Okay, 25, 25, 32, and 42, 8. So let's get those scriptures. Let's get those scriptures, and, and we're going to play this part, then we're going to go into a little, in a little more detail and check it out for yourself. So once again, just play this part. Disasters will soon spread from nation to nation. They will come like a powerful storm to all the faraway places on earth. Here, Jeremiah clearly warns us that this future cataclysm will be set us on a global scale. He goes on to say, the destroyer will come against every town. Not one town will escape. The Lord said this will happen. Here, Jeremiah identifies the global cataclysm as being caused by something he refers to as the destroyer. So are there any similar ancient texts from the same period of time that give us the same exact wording? Yes, there is. For this, we go back to the Exodus which was as much a blessing for the Hebrews as it was a terrible curse for the Egyptians. In the aftermath of Exodus, the Egyptians had lost their faith. Their own pantheon of gods had proven impotent before the powers of the Hebrew God. Just as we felt compelled to understand why 9-11 caught us so unawares, the Egyptians needed to understand what happened to them as well. So as the Hebrews began to write the Old Testament, Egyptians simultaneously penned a massive anthology called the Great Book. The original text was written in ancient Hieratic and was later translated into Phoenician and then on into English. In its original form, the Great Book was the size of a modern encyclopedia and it offered very precise historical accounts. Two such notable accounts were Noah's Flood or the Deluge as it is more commonly known across the four corners of the earth. In the Egyptian account of Sassuda and Hanon, they described an ark very similar to the one built by Noah, and in much the same manner. Then there are the Egyptian accounts of the ten plates of Exodus. It is important to keep in mind their version was written by the vanquished, as opposed to the Old Testament account, which was written by the victorious Hebrews. There are many similarities between the two. For example, neither the Hebrews nor the Egyptians mention the actual name of the Pharaoh of Exodus. However, where they differ, and strikingly so, is in what actually caused the ten plagues of Exodus. According to the ancient Egyptians, what caused the ten plagues of Exodus was a massive object. They also tell us this same object caused Noah's flood and the destruction. 
destruction of Atlantis as well. Like the Hebrew prophet Jeremiah, they too called it the Destroyer and have warned us of its return. In fact, the ancient Egyptians go to great length to warn us that Jeremiah's Destroyer will return with catastrophic consequences for all of the earth and those who live upon it and in these days. What remains of these ancient Egyptian historical accounts are contained within the first six books of the Colbert Bible, and they corroborate similar accounts in the Hebrew Torah, or the Old Testament, as it is referred to by Christians. Scientifically accurate, these ancient Egyptian accounts read as easily as man-on-the-street TV interviews. This is why noted Planet X historian Greg Jenner says that the Colbert Bible is the Rosetta Stone of Planet X. This is because the Egyptian accounts are so quiescent they unlock many Planet X secrets buried within the Holy Bible and numerous other ancient texts and folklore. Many of the harbinger signs of the destroyer's return mentioned within the Colbert Bible have already come to pass, and it is warning us that what will come will be Jeremiah's destroyer. The Colbert Bible gives us many examples of what this is going to be like. The most notable comes from the Book of Manuscripts. When blood drops upon the earth, the destroyer will appear, and mountains will open up and belch forth fire and ashes. Trees will be destroyed, and all living things engulfed. Waters will be swallowed up by the land, and seas will boil. Assuming our governments know all this, what are they doing about it? And of course, we want to know what's going to happen to us. Well, our governments have known about it for a long time, and yes, they're doing plenty about it. The question is, what are you doing about it? Good question. Once this all begins to sink in, it can take your breath away. And so the first question we often ask ourselves is, am I nuts? Am I just seeing things? For those who feel this way, you're not nuts and you're not seeing things. What's happening is that the blinders are coming off. 